kind of, kind of an ad hoc thing because basically about a week ago Theo went, oh yeah, I added a 15 minute slot for you to talk about something not hideously technical. <laughs> Which I sort of went, okay. And then I got three nights sleep in six days, spent the following half a week asleep, and then um, just about got back to normality in times to fly out. I love it when customers have two similarly named projects and give us the deadlines the wrong way round. <laughs> I am not joking. Welcome to Shadowcat. There is a reason why we build by the hour. <laughs> anyway, um, kind of what, I, what I wanted to say is we're at a point now. I mean, okay, we did have, we did have a, I did overhear one of the traditional let's rant about Pearl 5 versus Pearl 6 conversations, but you know, that was Wendy versus Abigail, which is basically an infinite loop no matter what. So, you know. Um, it, it was entertaining until it got on to about the fifth iteration and then I went out for a smoke. Because, you know, better, better cancer than listen to that anymore. Um, but, Think about, people, people, are, people are often saying, oh, it, it, it's harder to find jobs that have Pearl in the, in the title. Well, you know what? Every single place that I've ever worked that heavily relied on Pearl, they didn't heavily rely on Pearl because a manager mandated it. Because, honestly, the, it, it was management who didn't care. If a manager mandates something, they will mandate something with a huge amount of corporate funding. See also Java. Um, I mean, I, I, I have seen some very impressive things done in Java, but there's a lot of places where the platform choice was made before the first line, of, before the first developer was hired. It's kind of like the, um, the, the there was one place I worked at where they had hired consultants from Sun to build their network before hiring a technical team. I was very impressed at how effectively said consultants had managed to dump all of their end-of-life inventory on us. <laughs> Fortunately, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was some hardware, so end-of-life meant it's only going to last another 12 years. <laughs> um, but, you know, we are doing... Yeah, no, that, that, was, that was Solaris uh, 2.6 and 8 at that point. I was really happy. I built my own 5.8.0 and shipped it in user local. Um, I, would have used the, I would have used vendor packages, except that I'd have had to have asked the systems team to install things. Um, and the, the, the systems team, team at that place were... How do I put this? Every actual sysadmin I've ever met would probably have punched them within a week. Um, anyway, the thing is, right, we're doing things that we thought were impossible five years ago. Um, a major release of Pearl 5 every year? I mean, that's normal now. You just expect it to happen. I, 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 I remember waiting for 5.10. I wasn't sure whether, the, whether we were going to get a major release of Pearl 5 or a working Pearl 6 first at that point. That or I was going to die of old age before either of them happened. <laughs> um, now, major release of Pearl 5 every year. Vicudo is coming on in leaps and bounds. And, you know, I'm, 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 I owe Liz a weekend at some point to try and, get, to try and figure out how to get more of the airport to see Fantestas to smoke it. But there's so, so many things that we thought simply would probably never happen, have either already happened so often they're normal, or are actually close enough to happening that even, you know, I as the um, first of the perfectly, perfectly spherical Pearl 6 skeptics can see myself having fun in code using it within the next half decade. Um, no, seriously, that, that's a huge improvement on my previous position. Um, but, you know, we, and we look at all of this, and then what what, what what do we get? Oh, people are still saying Pearl is dying. No, they're not. I mean, the, the, odd, the odd person is, but um, uh, the UK Unix Users Group, sysadmin conference this spring, um, I ended up talking about similar stuff to, uh, to what I was today. 
People came up to me afterwards and talked about the content. Nobody seemed surprised that somebody doing crazy sysadmin stuff would choose to use Perl to do it. Um, Mark Keating's talk doing a sort of here's the state of the art, remember that the state of the art is still evolving even if, we, even if we're not the, the new shiny thing, ended up getting voted the best talk at the conference because people actually care. They're not necessarily going to use it anytime soon, but this is the point. I mean, that, that last lightning talk was a great example. Perl has always got into places, not because they have made a strategic decision to use Perl, but because somebody on the ground floor has made a tactical decision to use Perl, and then it's too useful to not keep using. And I think, you know, our, our, our great experience here isn't even necessarily the language, it's the community, it's the culture, it's the get things done in a solid and sensible way attitude. You know, be done, deployed, and down the pub while everybody else is still waiting for things to recompile. That, that, that's the whole point of Pearl, isn't it? I, 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 I sort of feel like um, you know, people going, oh, we need shinier websites. No, ship something people can actually use. I'm, as, as soon as I rewrite the internals again, I'm going to put the SSH key manager I've written up online as a single file that auto-installs itself. Because I think maybe some people will, use, will find that useful. And then when they go, hey, I could do with an extra feature in this. Oh, wow, somebody's writing Perl. It wasn't before. This is how, this is how you get people doing stuff. JFDI is, is nine-tenths of the law. Um, you know, I've, I've seen so many places that have, gone, that have gone the thing of, yes, this service will later be written in Java, but for the moment we can live with the Perl prototype. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's ten years later. The Perl prototype is still running. I, this is not a bad thing, um, and I, I think fundamentally, um, you know, pe people go, I mean, okay, I still regularly see large Perl projects being rewritten in something else. Fine. Here's the thing, yeah? Have you looked at the code for any of those projects? Rewriting them in VV6 would have been an improvement just because it would have killed the existing code. You know, the last, the last of the horrible, horrible dot-com era crap, formmail.pl, oh my god, my eyes are bleeding, Pearl. Yeah, that's dying. Good! It deserves to be dead. I don't care what you rewrite it in, just kill it with fire. This is fine. But then every time, every time I, I go to a workshop, people are talking about, um, we've got more attendees this year than last year, there's more... More talks, more tracks. Yep, CNA, yep, CEU um, are edging slightly larger every year. You know, okay, maybe we're not going to be the next big thing again. What did being the next big thing get us during the dot com boom? It got us the formmail.pl crap. The same people who made a complete mess of Bill's reputation went on to make, I mean, these people were, so, were such excellent programmers. They actually managed to make PHP look worse than it actually is. <laughs> then they made a mess in Rails. Now I think now I think the hipsters are making a mess in Node.js and Go. Who cares? Really? I don't want to work with those people anyway. Have fun. Get stuff done. Do the right thing. Learn multiple languages. Perl exists in the Unix ecosystem. It exists in the Unix environment. That means there is a tool for a job. Sometimes Perl is not the right tool. This does not mean there is a bad thing with Perl. It means we're not trying to do everything. We are not trying to be through the tentacle monster and appear and hentai your servers. This is not a bad thing. You know, if, if there's something useful in another language, integrate with it. You, you can talk JSON to it, you can talk IPC to it, you can talk 0MQ to it, I don't care. But recognize that Perl has always existed in a context where make, see, shell, send, orc, all of these you use when they're the sensible thing to use and don't when they're not. And, yeah, and th th <laughs> the point is, you foster that attitude in yourself and you then have the moral high ground to say, well, in this case, Perl is going to be the sensible thing to do it. Here is working code to do it. What's the business case for rewriting it?
And you know, the guy, the guy on the next desk over who's got a serious heart on for Ruby might go, oh, but your boss, your boss is going to go, but it's already deployed and running. Why rewrite it? And that, that, that's, that's where we want to go. Stop worrying about the fact that the thundering herd of populist idiots have gone away. Just have fun, get stuff done, appreciate the fact that while the usage of Perl in corporate environments might be still dropping, the Perl community itself is growing. CPAN authorship is still increasing, CPAN uploads are still increasing. By all of the metrics of the Perl that I care about, we're growing as, as fast as we ever have before, if not faster. And you know what? That's enough. Because this, you know, the, the, the secret weapon of Pearl is the culture and the community. You know, it, it's, you know, Pearl 5 is just a VM. CPAN is the language. But the culture is the platform that makes it awesome. And I reckon, let's just take that and run with it. And go forth into whatever bright Pearl futures we end up with, whether it be Pearl 5 itself, whether it be Vicudo, whether somebody else comes along and does something completely insane in the next year that obsoletes both of them. Whatever. If it's the best tool for the job, we use it, we get stuff done, and we're done and down the pub. And that's what we're here for, right? Thank you very much.